Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this fly tying video we're going to talk about my current vise, the Stonfo Transformer. Stay tuned. I get a ton of emails about fly tying and fly fishing questions every day, but easily one of the most common emails relates to choosing the right vise. And trust me, I completely understand. There are so many factors that go into selecting that right vise for you that it can definitely be an overwhelming task in this fly tying process. There are a few things that I like to take into consideration before I go after that next vise, and some of them are easier to solve than others. For instance, number one, you have to figure out what's your budget for that vise, because there are vices that come in under $100, there are some that top out at $1,000, and you have to find that right range for you. Number two, it's really difficult to get your hands on a vise to try it out and see if it's going to suit your tying needs. And number three, on a related note, you have to figure out exactly what style of fly you plan on tying and if you're going to be incorporating any others in the future and if that vise can basically accommodate those needs. For instance, it'd be great to say that I'm going to be tying nothing but size 12 through size 18 trout flies, but I know for my own tying needs, that's not realistic. So I have to look for a vise that's going to suit those flies that I plan on tying on a regular basis. So that's kind of my lead in into talking about the Stonfo Transformer. And this is a newer vise that was just recently placed on the market. And to tell you just a little bit about Stonfo, Stonfo is an Italian based company. They sell fly fishing products, they sell regular fishing products, and fly tying as well. Um, some of their elite series of fly tying tools are my everyday go to tools. For those that regularly watch my videos, um, you know that I love the Stonfo tools. They are just a high quality tool. And uh, anytime I see their name on a product, it's one that I'm going to go after. They're really known very well in Europe, and they're starting to branch out into the United States, and there, there are some vendors that carry their products. Now, a couple years ago, they came out with a new vice that was called the Stonfo Cayman. Once I saw it, I knew I had to try it out. I went after it, I got one, and it was an awesome vice. I shouldn't say was. It's just sitting on my shelf on, to the right of me. The vise was just high quality, it had just the right look to it, it, ha it had a lot of weight to it. I mean, in short, I recommended that vise to a lot of tires over the last couple years without any hesitation, and I still will today. In fact, a lot of people have emailed me asking for a video related to that vise, so I promise you in the future I will make one related to the Stonfo Cayman. But sometime around, I want to say maybe spring 2015, Stonfo introduced a new vise called the Stonfo Transformer. And once I saw it, I said, you know what, I think I'm ready to take that plunge again and check out another vise. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video today. So before I kind of show you details on the vise, I will tell you a little bit about my tying. I do tie primarily trout flies, anywhere between size 8, the whole way down to a 22, 24, maybe a 26. And I'll show you what the, this transformer looks like with those small flies in the, the vise. I also do tie bass flies, striped bass flies, and occasionally saltwater flies. So I'll go the whole way up to kind of the medium aught sizes. And I do enjoy tying tube flies. I just recently got into that. And um, because of that, this vise basically fits all of my tying needs. And, and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about, but it's going to relate to its name, which is the transformer. To go into a few more details about this video, what I'm going to do is just change the camera angle and try to let the vise speak for itself. I'm going to go over just its basic functions, show you how it works, place some hooks inside of it, then really just show you the nitty gritty, show you what I really am drawn to and some reasons why I am now recommending this vise to others out there. So with all that said, uh, let me change things around a little bit and let me give you a close up of this Stonfo Transformer. Okay, I'll zoom in here as needed. But to start, whenever you get your Stonfo Transformer, it comes in a, a pretty large box like this. Inside the box, there are tons of goodies. And you have to take a little bit to kind of look through everything, and I'll, I'll kind of show you those in a bit. But really, the gist is you're going to get this large base. And this is a really large base. And what's nice about it is that it has two pockets where you can place lots of stuff, basically hooks and beads. That's what I tend to place in mine. And it has all these holes along the left for your bobbins and other tools which is really nice. You can, you can also place some of the, um, the pieces that come with the vise, though I tend to leave them in the, in the original box. It's a nice heavy base. It comes with this pedestal. Now I have a hook and hackle gauge on it. That is something that I added on my own. But then if we look at the basic vise, as we start to look at it, we're going to notice that it's a rotary style vise. And that's something to keep in mind. 
There are some things that we have to do at first to really make sure that it's going to be working properly. Number one, we have to understand how to place a hook in it. This will loosen and tighten the jaws and basically open them and close them. And once you have them set to that desired, we'll say that desired resistance where they're just starting to close on the hook, then we use this to lock them in place and they're locked right now on a, a humpy fly, one of my Uncle John's. There's also this little piece right here that's nothing more than just a holder for your, your bobbin. Whenever you're tying, if you want to place your thread off to the side and have it hang down, that's what this little tool is, is, is for. It's really convenient. Um, it's just something I, I don't really recognize. I don't think I've had on any of my other vices. And then we have a little material clip right here. It's a little bobbin that moves back and forth or just this little piece. Uh, it has a spring inside of it and it's really easy to just place materials down in there. You can tighten that up and have it set as, as loose or as firm as you'd like it. There's a couple other little things about this vise. On my side of the vise, there's all kinds of little knobs and I can actually tighten it up so that it won't turn. The rotary style is not turning right now because of a knob or I can loosen it to the point where it spins really free and you can see it just, it will move and move and move more than likely based on those ball bearings. But I, I like to keep it with just a little bit of resistance so I can turn it. Next, whenever I first got it, this piece was actually moved up a little bit. So I moved it down you, can, you just loosen it right here. And I, I move this entire headpiece down because I want the jaws so they're basically in line with the main shaft so that whenever I turn it, that hook is nearly spinning straight. So I want the, the body, that shank of the hook to basically stay on its own plane the entire time or as close to it as possible. Now that's kind of the overview of this vise, but then whenever I'm thinking about it from the rotary style, What's also nice is that it comes with this additional tool. And this is basically a bobbin cradle, which will also double as a, uh, a parachute cradle. And this is a really nice tool because as you're tying, if, if you're gonna be using the rotary feature and you, you've just you know, locked your thread in place and you wanna hang it, then you have it right here to hang so you know it's gonna be out of your way. You can hold the material and then wind forward accordingly. So it works really well for that. Um, this is just kind of the, the introduction video as to the basic transformer. So next, let me kind of talk to you a little bit more about some of its advanced features. Next, let's talk a little bit about why they call it the transformer. And this is really the neat part of the vise. This, in my opinion, has a really high quality head. It's, it's really nice. It's got very fine jaws. Um, it works really well with small flies. And we'll, we'll place a small fly in here in a little bit. But the beauty of this vise is that it can transform into three different vices. One's just the standard. It's the rotary inline vise. They have my number two, and I'm gonna show you a streamer head. Now, to get this out, it's really simple. I always like to see Stonfo. I want that side facing me. I pull back on the sleeve and pop out the head. Nothing to it. Really significant weight to it. I'm gonna pick up the next head. This is the streamer head. I'll give you a little close up of this right now. It's meant to stay straight. At least I haven't tried to, to mess around with it at all. And same thing, I, I wanna see Stonfo facing me. This one says Stonfo 2. Pull back the sleeve, lock it in place, and it's there. It's really that simple. This is meant for tying those big hooks, those big streamer hooks that are really starting to get popular. To use this one, it's simple. We just adjust it till it's semi-tight on the hook with this piece going down. And then I just pull the arm up and lock it in place. Then this hook is going nowhere. I don't wanna to just torque this up too much. But that's really all there is to it. What's great about this, you still have that rotary feature because the rotary piece is back here. Though with a lot of streamer flies, you may or may not be using that feature. In the event that you want to, this piece still comes out a significant distance. So it's still far enough away that you're not gonna feel cramped. And then finally, you have this pointing straight. So if you're gonna be tying any additional types of streamer patterns, and we know we typically have lots of materials coming off the back of them, you have that room back here. There's really nothing in its, in its way. Um, this is the, the head that I'm gonna be using to tie some striped bass patterns for early spring next year. I'll be using this one a lot over the winter for those larger patterns. Um, it's a really nice head. I definitely like the smaller head whenever I'm thinking of my trout flies. Whenever I start to think saltwater flies, whenever I start to think striped bass, those larger pike flies, this is definitely the head that I'm, I'm going to go to. Remove the hook. When I'm ready to go back to the, those trout flies, pop this out, put it somewhere safe, and it's transformed back. 
really just a, a really nice feature. Now let me show you the final head here, which is the, uh, the tube fly head. We're back to our base position, and now I'm going to talk just a little bit about this last head, and this is one used to tie tube flies. Same as before, let's just re remove my base head. And for this one, the way that we're going to be, be placing it in, I, want, I really prefer that this little piece, that's again kind of that rest for our thread, it's going to be facing me. So I can tighten this on the bottom. It's going to lock in just like that, now I'm ready to tie. And one thing I do want to mention, if you don't like having this little piece here, it could just simply unscrew out. Same thing on the base, this piece can unscrew out. If you don't like this material cl clip, it can be taken out as well. So if you prefer more of that clean look, you don't want anything interfering, you can remove all that stuff, which is really just a kind of a nice upgrade in a sense. Same as before, we still have the rotary feature. To use this one, it's, it's really nice because they give you all the needed tools to tie tube flies. For those of you that have been subscribed to my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm newer to the tube fly world, so a lot of this stuff really still seems kind of foreign to me. But for these tools, you pretty much have everything you need to use them, it's pretty simple. These pins are meant to be, uh, you, you just put your tube on it, you loosen this down here on the bottom, you slide this in until that tube is tight, and then you tighten the bottom. And then what's cool about this vise, you actually will turn this clockwise, and this head now will tighten up against the tube, which will push against this head on the outside, and it locks that tube in place in between the two. It really will just lock it firmly. So that's a really nice feature with these vices. If we choose to go with one of their, their other pins, instead of using these pins, I believe they call their other ones this cylindrical, cylindrical pins or something along those lines. Let me see if it says in the box. Yeah, it's the, the, the graduated and cylindrical pins. And that one, I believe, was the one that was more like a cylinder. This is the graduated one where it, it goes from a taper. It starts off really heavy and it goes down really fine. There's a separate head that we use for that. Let me lock this one in place. And then to operate this, pretty much the same principles before. Let's loosen this, get it locked into place. It's nice and tight. And then you place your tube directly on this and it just butts up against this as it starts to go up against this transition, this taper, then it just locks in place and you're ready to start tying. Um, again, just really simple. You have lots of space. If you're going to be using the rotary function, again, everything fits. You don't have to worry about you know, cramming or anything along those lines. Um, I am absolutely new to the world of tying tube flies. I've only been tying them for around two years. So whenever I realized that this vise had that ability to go from trout flies to streamer flies, like I'm tying for stripers, to also tube flies, it was a no-brainer. This is what I tie, you know, these are these are really great tools. Everything's high quality on it. It works really well. It's very smooth and it, it really just fit my, my tying needs. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm, I wanna just kinda zoom in a little bit before I finish up this video and just show you some hooks in the vise so you know exactly what it looks like and, and basically how small and kinda how large it can tie. Okay, now I brought the camera in just a little bit on this Stonfo transformer. Here's a close up. I'll just show you a couple hooks in this. Uh, for starters, the most common questions that I really tend to see, especially at shows, are how small or how large can it tie? This is about as small as I would tie. This is an Orvis size 26. It's a big eye dry fly hook. It's one extra fine. It's got the mini barb. Um, it's a tiny hook. I can tell you I rarely tie on this size of hook. But just to see if it can... It locked in place, I'm not going anywhere. I'm hoping you can see that. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. It's kind of off angle. Um, it's a tiny fly. I'll show you the humpy that I had in there earlier. So just to kind of put it all in perspective, there is no doubt that um, this can take small hooks. Size 26 is definitely beyond what I typically tie. Just because you see this in my vise doesn't mean you're gonna see many of these in the vise, but Without a doubt, this one can go down that, that far. So let me change it up, let me put the streamer in, and I'll put a larger hook into that one. Finally, let's talk about the large hooks. So let me grab a couple large hooks that I, I tie with, and again, this is more of the upper extreme of, of my tying. I've transformed this into the streamer head. I'm gonna start with a, a, a smaller aught size bass hook. 
to place this in. I'm just going to adjust this till, till it gets to a point where I can just tighten it up a little bit. Once it's there, I'm going to move, swing this arm to the opposite side. I'm not necessarily worried about my hook placement. All we're testing to see is how much torque can we apply to this. And from my angle, I'm, I'm definitely putting a lot of torque on it and I don't see that hook point moving at all, which is good. That means we can really torque down on it when we're tying some of those larger patterns. We still have the rotary feature. Let's remove this one. And now let me go with the saltwater hook. This is a size one. It's more of a thicker hook. And, and I can tell you, I, I tend to have problems when I'm tying on larger saltwater hooks because they, they really seem to want to slide in that vise. So my first suggestion, I try to put in as much of the hook as possible. Because when I'm tying on these saltwater hooks, I'm typically just tying on the shaft. We're not worried about that whatsoever. So I want to get as much of that shaft involved against this uh, jaw as possible. Once I have it locked into place, I'm just going to tighten it on this screw. Once I have that tightened, I'm going to swing the arm up, apply pressure to this hook, and now at this point, let's torque it. It definitely does not have any movement that I'm seeing. Maybe a slight movement, but I don't think so. I think it's probably just my eyes playing tricks with me. So it's nice to know that we can really torque down on some of these larger, these larger uh, hooks and not worry about them flying out and possibly getting hurt because of that. Let me get these out of the way. Let me do the final transformation, get it back to the original. Whenever I say original, this is just the most common one that I use. And, and what I want to finally show you is that it also comes with a couple other things. Uh, number one, it comes with a couple Allen wrenches that you can use to, to make all the adjustments that I, that I showed you earlier. And then it comes with this really neat tool. For those of you dry fly tires out there, this is a parachute post tool. Let me zoom out a little bit and just show you how this works. If you remember, we had this piece originally that was used whenever we had the rotary function going, but it simply can be removed out of this piece over here, and then we can place it in this way. And once we have it in this way, let me see if I can try to do this without looking too much like a fool. Once we have it in, we take this and slide it along that, that bar, and it will be directly above our hook placement. Now I kind of have everything a little bit out of the way here right now. I definitely did, did a really fast job in setting that up. But the short is that this will then connect to your parachute post. And when you have it connected, it will not allow that parachute post to come free. That parachute post will be locked upwards so you can wind your parachute hackle in a perpendicular position to that post. This is a really handy tool and it's great to know that this comes with the transformer vise. You don't have to purchase this separately. And I apologize about my poor setup of it over there. But I think you guys get the gist. Well, before I, I switch to my final thoughts, what I do want to mention at this point, if there's anything that you saw me doing and maybe I rushed a little bit or maybe you didn't quite understand it, please feel free to reach out to me because uh, there are definitely a lot of nuances to this vice. Um, it's a great vice. There's no doubt about it. And if there's something you'd like to learn a little bit more about it, please let me know if, if there's a question you have about a feature or how you tighten or loosen something or uh, something that you saw that, that you really just want to know a little bit more about. Please feel free to reach out to me and I will do my best to get you that answer. So with all that said, let me kind of shift the camera back and, and kind of share my final thoughts on the Stonefo Transformer. Now that I've given you a close-up of this vise, I hope you can agree with me that it is definitely a high-quality fly tying tool. For those of you that are thinking about buying a new vise in the near future, then by all means check this one out because it is one that I absolutely recommend. It's a great fly tying vise that easily meets all of my tying needs. If you have any questions about it or if you want to see any other close-ups or you'd like me to take a picture of it at a certain angle or measure it for you, then by all means um, shoot, shoot me an email or contact me via my Trout and Feather website and I will do my best to answer your question, to get that picture for you and to see if this is the right vice for you. If you are thinking about purchasing one, let's keep in mind that Stonfo is out of Italy and they really do a lot of business in that European market. It may be tough to find one of these vices from a vendor in the US, though I'll recommend checking out, I believe there's a website, maybe Fishing Mart or Fly Fishing Mart, um, and, and they're out of a European country and you can get a lot of the Stonfo products from them. I'll put a link to them in the description of this video. And I've also seen a lot of Stonfo products on eBay. They're not used products, they're brand new products. And again, it's by that same vendor. So if you look in the description of the video, you'll see the vendor that I'm talking about out of Europe. And I'll also put a link in there to the Stonfo website that talks about this vice a little bit more. 
Well, with all that said, if you do have any questions or any comments in regards to the vices, please send them my way. I get enough emails about them already. But if you'd like to mention them in the comments section of this video, I would really appreciate it just to see what kind of discussion we can get started. Is there something that you really like about this vice that you wish you had it on yours? Or is there something that you've kind of connected to in this video regarding vices? So please leave those in the comments section down below. Or as always, you can email me at tcamisa at gmail.com. If you'd like to watch more of my fly tying and fly fishing tutorials, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I have a Facebook page, and if you like that, you'll receive regular fly tying and fly fishing updates. Well, with all that said, thank you very much for viewing this video. Thanks ahead of time for any comments that you leave down below. And I hope you learned a little bit more about this great Stonfo vice called the Transformer.